Welcome to May Craft Crates. I am so excited to get crafting with you guys. The first two projects that we're gonna start with are our little Velcro star and also our USA sign. So the pieces that you will wanna grab is your wood block, your paint of colors of choice. Um, you will have some twine and your little um, red and white ribbon pieces. The other thing that you may want to grab is um, a glue gun or glue of your choice. You want to make sure that you have your Velcros and Velcro piece or pieces. I am going to be testing this out. I'm not so sure these are going to be what I want, but I ordered them and now that they're here, I want to give them a whirl. Um, so we're going to do that today too. You will also want to have your sponge and your paintbrush. If you would like to do the ticking marks around your star, you will also want to have um, a paint pen or a really thin um, paintbrush or even a, an X-Acto knife you could use as well. So <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and get started. The first thing that I would recommend doing which I have kind of already jumped the gun on for you guys, and I'm sorry, we got a little bit crazy with prepping for you guys, um, is you will want to grab your block, your wood block, and paint it white. That's your color of choice. If you ordered the block for your, your star, your Velcro star to go on, then you can go ahead and paint that at this time as well. And Think about painting that a color that will take you through for many months. Um, as that piece just Velcros on and off each month, you wanna make sure that it matches whatever. So white and black are usually pretty good colors to paint that block. So I have already painted my two blocks, but I am going to paint, here it is, the star. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started doing that right now so that it can actually dry. I'm going a little bit out of order than what you guys will be receiving in your um, written or your paper directions, um, but that's only because um, we got a little carried away on how many wood um, signs we, um, we prepped the other day for the finished craft crates and um, I didn't think it would be that big of a deal. You guys can know how to paint. The paint that I'm using is, or that I use, is a chalk paint. I do prefer a chalk paint or even a clay paint. I'm finding I like clay paints as well. They cover really well and they dry super fast. Um, I do have a brand that I use currently called Bungalow 47. And if you, ordered some with your craft crate, that is what you will be receiving. If not, any paint works. Use whatever you have around the house. You could even put outdoor paint on these if you really wanted to. If that's what you have, use it up. That's why we're also going to be trying some um, this Velcro, because I have Velcro here that from my teaching days that I'm trying to use up and trying out other ones as well along the way. So here's my star. I'm just gonna set it to the side and let it dry. Mine does not need a second um, coat of paint on it, so it'll be good to go with that. <clears throat> now, if you're following along with the instructions, I will have said I would recommend you painting the two white, the two blocks, assuming that you're painting both white, and then paint the red. While they would be drying, we would be, we'll be getting back on track now and you will go ahead and grab your twine and your ribbon. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this um, ribbon. You could knot it like you would a shoe, like the beginning of your shoe, um, or the other way you can do it, I think this is called a slip knot, don't quote me, you know, I never know my, my knots. <laughs> um, so what I did was I took this and I folded it in half here, just folded it in half. And then what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna get a little bit closer to the camera. So it is folded in half, okay? I'm putting my little piece of twine here. And what we're going to do is put, I like to put my finger 
through the loop down here and pull the end pieces through and then pull the two end pieces nice and tight around the knot and you will notice that it looks just like that okay so um i hopefully well these should be cut perfectly long enough um i had a couple others that were cut a little bit too short as i was getting a little bit low on um they were like the end it was like one last ending piece and i went ahead and kept those the other day but they were just a little bit short so um these should be fine for you guys to get through to here if ever you are um doing these knots on your own with any type of a fabric or um ribbon in the future <laughs> take it from me if you go a little too short it's kind of difficult to get it through and it doesn't work so i um have tried multiple different sizes for you guys on here and i think that we finally found a size that works well so the last one it already kind of is folded in half but i'm gonna here we go i'm gonna go right in the center of the two so that they're nice and close so again we folded this longer piece in half and then i kind of bring it over to my twine, put the twine basically in the center of it, put my finger through the loop on the end, grab the two pieces of the end, kind of push them through the loop, pull them. Oops, one didn't make it. Oops, let's start over. It's one thing I cannot start, I can't fix it once I mess it up. Put a pause on that. So here we go. We're going through the little funny rabbit hole <laughs> and grabbing the two pieces on the end. And it's actually just as easy to pull the twine just a little bit to tighten it up as well so that you're not pulling so hard on the fabric. We have our little fabric ribbon here and it's good to go. All right. Easy peasy. Um, I have my scissors. Oops, right here. And I'm just going to trim it up a little bit because it does fray a little bit. And the other thing that I like to do is just cut them on a diagonal just a little bit. You could do the however you want to cut yours, but I like it just one simple diagonal. Okay. And last but not least, this guy here on my end. There you go, big guy. And They do fray a little bit, but not too, too much. They'll be fine. So we're gonna put it to the side just for a moment. The uh, next thing we're gonna do is grab our USA stencil. It already has a transfer, clear transfer tape on there. So what we're gonna do with this is we are going to peel the back, the like papery part off. Then what we're going to do, and if you need it to do this, this is how I did my very first sign, is I just kind of eyeballed where um, I wanted my banner to go. So I just wanted it kind of in the top corner. It's a little wonky right now, and that's okay, because we're gonna glue it. <clears throat> and I'm just lining up my USA kind of in the corner just probably about a quarter to a half an inch on each of the sides. I'm pushing my um, vinyl or my stencil, I should say, on nice and tight. So it's nice and um, stuck on there, okay. And you know guys, what I just completely jumped the gun on, I forgot to do is weed my vinyl. 
So you know what? Let me just show you really quick, although it's not gonna be as sticky. Let's back it up for a second. I'm sorry, I skipped a big step. So, um, I gave you the USA stuck together. I did not weed it out. I did not pull the letters out that you would want to if you were getting a stencil, like a plastic one at the store or Mylar, right? I leave this on here so that you can have two. You can actually make two signs. You could use the USA letters on something else. But, so what we are gonna do um, in this case is we are going to leave it, we're gonna weed it as we go. So basically, we are, um, I like to bend it in half at this point so that my letters are going to get left behind. Sorry, I just skipped over that, had a little brain fart. The one part that you are going to keep with you is the inside of the A. Part of my A just really wants to stay with this rest of them. All right, so there are my letters. USA part, so now you have this part and I will tell you in a minute what you can do with that. So here's your stencil that we are putting on right back where I had it onto the wood and I just eyeball it. This isn't anything like a lot of script that we're kind of going to be reading and notice that it is um, not straight. The next thing we're going to do is peel our transfer tape off. Okay, so there's this clear stuff right here, clear transfer tape, and I'm literally just pulling it off. Yeah, so you guys can see it right on top of itself. And if you saw it, when it pulled up, I just put it right back down, need the pressure of the table, and I just restuck it back on. Okay, so now I have the clear, and you can just kind of put that to the side. You are going to, or you can put it right over top of the USA that we left behind. And I did not bring any white paint in here. So I'm just making sure that my stencil is on here really, really well. I'm going to try out the way that the majority of you guys are using your stencils right now with these blue stencils. Um, I know many of you are not putting the white paint on top of the letters anymore. You feel as though you don't need it. I am an old, don't teach, what is it, old drug new tricks. I've always done it that way and that has worked well for me. So. Let's just try it out and see what happens. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is get a little bit of my red, which I keep my paint on foil um, because that way I can close it up in between projects. And this is not what the color I need, I need blue. All right, so blue on the sponge. And I am just a little dabble duty, less is more, okay? So I'm just going to sponge it on here. And this is definitely going to need two coats. Okay, so I'm just sponging, sponging away. Maybe you guys can see a little a different angle. So I um, always recommend the white. 
especially if you are kind of new to this, it really helps with the bleeding underneath it. But as I said, I have a lot of you guys that feel as though since we have switched to this type of stencil, you don't need the white paint to keep that barrier um, from allowing it to bleed. All right, so this one definitely is going to need a second coat. <clears throat> this blue just does. It's not, it, I don't know, the pigment isn't there like I love it, but okay, so that's kind of step one. If you're doing the white, you put the white on, let it dry completely, and then you can, once it was completely dry, then you would go back and do that step. So my star is totally dry, nice and dry. So I'm going to put the little ticking marks on here and I'm going to use a paint pen. It's gonna show you the ease of a paint pen. It just gives me a really nice line, like a marker. The paint pen that I use is Posca. P-O-S-C-A. I do have a link for it on the Facebook page. They are the absolute best. I ordered it off of Amazon and the link is um, the same ones that I have because there are different tips and I think this is the thin tip, but I think there is one that is actually even, one that tip is even a little bit um, more thin than this guy. Okay, so it has the ticking marks. I just went ahead and did mine all around. I think the other thing that'd be super cute is if like polka dots or, or just leave it and make it simple and plain. Plain isn't the right word. Make it just simple and simple. <laughs> um, okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do this is dry enough. Now, if you are using an acrylic paint, yours would not have been dry already. And you can usually tell if your paint is dry, if it's still, if, if it's not dry, or let me say, if your paint is still wet, if it's a little bit cool or damp to the touch, that means it's still wet. Obviously, if you hold it up in the light, it might be, um, you might be able to see if it's shinier, to see if it's a little bit wet. Um, still, but just make sure that if you're using an acrylic paint or even an oil paint, um, oil face paint, then they really need some time, more time to dry. But I am all for using what you have. Okay, so there is the second coat of that. I am now going to peel it right off. And oftentimes you can reuse these stencils and it actually did a really good job without the white. So y'all are right, man. So I could easily reuse this stencil again. I'm gonna put it right back on top of the other. The only thing that we're gonna need is to pull off the inside of the A. There it goes. The next thing I'm going to do is grab my hot glue gun that I do have on and, and nice and warm. How many times have I been on here with you guys and forgot to turn it on? <laughs> and there is no right or wrong here as far as where this puppy goes. Um, the only thing that I really did like is lining up the center of the knot for the center of the three to the corner. That was just something like my eyes kind of um, saw. I am going to put a little bit of glue on the center knot just to kind of give me something to work with so it's not slipping and sliding all around. And then next is I'm going to wrap it kind of around the corner. 
And I'm just going to add a little bit of glue over here in the back side as well, just a hair, just to anchor it on so it stays. Doing the same thing now to the top. Adding a little glue there. Oop, I almost put it down on the table. <clears throat> and then next, I'm just adding a tiny little bit of glue onto the bottom side of the other knot. Turned out so cute. Love it. Adding. And you're going to trim the edges. Of my toy. Our sign is done. There it is. So the next thing that we are doing is now going to add our Velcro onto the back of, or yeah, the back of the star and onto here. Now, if you did not um, ever order your block, you can. It's under the, um, when you go onto the main craft crate section, there's that, that link that links you to the upgrades and, um, additional items like paint. The block is included on that. It's, this is $5 extra that you can add. The reason why you didn't get it, it, um, yeah, the reason why you didn't get it is because it was in the January craft crate, and so there's no need to get them every single month. That was kind of the point of having yet another sign with being able to change it each month. But if you decide, and if you decide not to have it and just use a star, that's totally fine too. Um, each month then you will receive a piece of Velcro. So let's just say this is your very first month, and you are getting this sign for the first time then you will receive this Velcro here. And um, I tore my other Velcro off because like I said, I'm test driving this really quick to see if it's gonna work. So I'm just peeling off the rest of the glue here and I'm gonna Velcro it on. Now, if you've already received your other side of the block and or deciding not to get it, each month you will receive one side of the Velcro. Okay, so I have to look it up, tired brain here, but I believe that you guys are, DIY gets like prickly and then the finish gets the not prickly. Okay, so if it's really sticky and it ends up pulling the other half of the Velcro off each time on the other end, add a little bit of glue to the center. That just means it's super sticky um, or super strong Velcro and that will keep it on there a little bit longer. So now we're going to add the other half of the Velcro on. I'm thinking this Velcro is not gonna be strong enough, but let's see what happens. Yeah. Actually, it's fine. Woohoo. All right, so here it is, and we have our Velcro sign. All right, so next we will get on here and we are going to record the truck. And I know you guys are oh so excited about the truck. So we will be working on the truck next and then the upgrades. So for now, enjoy these two. And that was a pretty quick craft. So you can go ahead and start decorating right away, take some pictures. And um, once you get it all decorated, you know, you have to share those photos because I love to see them, and especially when you guys tag us in those. If you have any questions, definitely let me know, reach out. I am here. You can email me at Brian. Well, you can email me. And the email address is Brian at 
brianfarmersmarket.com. You can DM me on Instagram, PM me on our um, Facebook page. And soon we are working on a text number for you guys as well. So right on target. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, reach out. We are definitely here or put a question in the chat of the group. Talk to you guys soon.